Hey everyone, welcome to Mars. Virtual Mars, I guess, to be more specific. And my Mars base. So I just wanted to make this quick video to show you guys some more gameplay of Stationeers, available on Steam, brought to us by the same developers that brought us Icarus, Rocketworks from New Zealand. And uh, the reason why I wanted to do this video is just because I'm having a great time really getting the hang of this video or this game. It's a really complex game, like I've said in the past, huge in engineering and science. Uh, and it's even more challenging for we Yanks because it's in uh, the metric system. And even though I taught science, I'm still partial to the imperial system. But uh, what I wanted to quickly go over in this video is uh, some accomplishments I've done that I'm really proud of, I wanna show off, maybe some of you are excited to play this game as well. So specifically, I set up a power grid, this power station here with a bunch of solar panels, and I programmed them using a logic circuit to follow the uh, sun's rays. Logic circuit that includes a, you know, a solar panel daylight sensor. And um, the reason why I wanted to set this up is because I program my lights and my ooh Martian dust storm, my lights in my Mars base to turn on automatically at night, and I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. But doing that really diminishes about half of these battery stations, of which I think there's about 15 or so, and uh, I really don't like using that much power. I rather have some more in reserve. So what I've done is I've set up an additional four solar panels up here, but I have not yet connected them. Okay. Oh, I need to adjust this one before we do. It's not in alignment. That's my fault. There we go. Okay. All of these should be now facing zero degrees. So once this storm is over, I'm gonna go ahead and hook these four new solar panels into our current electrical grid, and they should sync themselves up with these six solar panels over here. So let's time warp to a time of day that's not in a Martian dust storm, and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, looks like the storm has cleared up, and uh, my panels have taken some damage. Their health is about 64%. Even my new ones I haven't even used yet are at 82% now, so I'll have to fix those here in the next couple nights. But we're gonna go ahead and hook these up now. And please work, please work. Yep, there they go. Should be about horizontal. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, let's make sure they're moving now and following the sun's rays. Yes, sir. Good stuff. That should charge these batteries even faster now and uh, hopefully get them all showing blue by the time the sun goes down. And that's the next thing we're gonna demonstrate is when the sun goes down, all these lights that I've installed in my base should turn on automatically. Now, this is something I did all on my own. Uh, I am not a computer programmer, and it's kind of funny. This game is, this game was programmed by computer programmers to allow other people to program in it. It's like Inception. So I, I kind of took what I learned from researching online to make these solar panels work using this logic system. And I applied it to my lights. Jetpack! Which I have as the, like the, the brain of my lighting system is right here on my little beacon tower. So I don't get lost when I go exploring. Um, I'm actually surprised that I got this to work as quick as quickly as I did. You got to do all different kinds of chips, like a logic reader memory, a math unit, or a compare unit batch writer, and then you got to program each thing with their certain, you know, functions and variables. So it's quite intricate, and it's a lot of trial and error, especially on my part. But uh, again, I was kind of pleasantly surprised I got that working. One of the first attempts that I've done. So we're gonna wait for the sun to go down for those lights to demonstrate how they work. 
It's my pump room. This, <laughs> for those of you who are on Locals, local supporters, you saw how much of a pain my water and nitrogen system was, but I've since added to it with an oxygen system as well. And I know my base doesn't, it's got quite a few holes in it <laughs> because I haven't put any skin on it yet and pressurized it. I've only done that to my greenhouse area up here. Here's the working airlock, the functioning airlock, and uh, got it pressurized to just over 100 kilopascals. I think that's the metric term, right? But uh, one of the next things on my on my to-do list is to skin the base and then pressurize the entire base. Okay, let's get a nice view up here for the lights and then we're gonna fast forward, we're gonna time warp to nighttime. Wait for it. There they are. Yeah, I'm so proud of that. So again, the game, the reason I bring this game up is uh, just because it's, just, it's such a fascinating game. It, it, it really makes you work for it. It really does. A lot of, uh, you know, flying by the seat of your pants to get things to, to work correctly. And so I, I highly recommend this game for any of you who have maybe high school age kids or even junior high um, or middle school, whatever you call it. Throw this game at them, like literally burn it to a disc and then throw it at their heads. <laughs> and if I had kids, I would make it like a fun challenge for them. I'd be like, hey man, if you can, you know, build a rocket, which is like the end game. If you can build a rocket, survive long enough to do that and fly to another planet, I'll take you out to a nice dinner at Red Lobster or something like that. <laughs> to me, that would be quite the reward, All right? Because who knows, maybe you will, um, maybe you'll get them interested in, in science and engineering and push them, well, not push them, but allow them to push themselves toward a, uh, a field and some sort of, uh, some career, career in, a, in a tech field like that. There's a lot of money to be had anyway, and, and that is the future. All right, now excuse me while I take off my pants and get a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> Naked. See you guys.